This is the answer to question number three on your homework assignment. The question is a, two, a 0 0.25 gram sample of hydrocarbon undergoes complete combustion to produce 0 0.845 grams of carbon dioxide and 0 0.173 grams of water. What is the empirical formula of this compound? So we begin uh, to frame this question by putting this unknown hydrocarbon. We don't know how many carbons and we don't know how many hydrogens are in it, so I put variables for the number CX, HY. It's combining with oxygen and it's going to form carbon dioxide and water upon complete combustion. That's what we get. When we burn hydrocarbons, we get CO2 and water. All of the CO2 is formed from all of the carbon in the hydrocarbon. If it's a complete combustion reaction, every bit of carbon that you find in the CO2 comes from this molecule. As well, every bit of hydrogen that comes from, that's formed, uh, that's used in forming the water, comes from the hydrogen of the hydrocarbon. And of course, the oxygen is provided by, from an external source. So what we do is we find how many moles of carbon dioxide and how many moles of water are being formed. That's what this calculation is about. This is the molar mass of carbon dioxide. This is the molar mass of water. So we find out that we have that, that many moles of carbon dioxide. And then I wrote and C. Why? Because whatever number of moles of carbon dioxide we get, we'll have the same number of moles of carbon. Because for every mole of carbon dioxide, you get one mole of carbon. Likewise, uh, for every mole of water that's formed, you're going to get twice as many moles of hydrogen. So we have 9.6 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of water forming. Twice that amount is 1.92 times 10 moles of hydrogen. Then I take the two mole quantities and I convert them into gram quantities. So to convert moles of carbon into grams of carbon, I multiply by the molar mass of carbon, which is 12.011, and I get 2.306 times 10 to the minus 1 grams of carbon. I multiply this quantity of mole, uh, in moles of hydrogen by the molar mass of hydrogen, and I get that many grams of hydrogen. Which I forgot to write, grams of hydrogen. Then what I do is I add these two quantities. And why do I do this? I add these two quantities to make sure, to verify that they add up to this number. If they don't add up to this number, it must mean that there's some other chemical in the mix. But when I did add them up, I got 0 0.24996, which is awfully close to 0 0.25, perfectly well within experimental error. So it's safe to say that everything's been accounted for. This, this substance contains only carbon and hydrogen. So then what I do is I took, I take the, uh, the mass of the carbon and I divide it by the mass of the total sample. And that tells me the percent carbon in the mixture, or the percent carbon in this substance. If there's 92% carbon, then the rest is hydrogen, then the rest has to be 8% hydrogen. Then I assume that there's a 100 gram sample, which means I'll have 92 grams of carbon, 8 grams of hydrogen. I divide by the molar mass of carbon, and I divide by the molar mass of hydrogen, respectively, and I get these two mole quantities. I then take the lower of the two numbers, divide both of them by the lower of two numbers, and I get this proportion, 1 to 1.03. 1.03 is close enough to 1 that we can safely say that it's within experimental error. So we conclude that the empirical formula of this compound is C1H1.